Hello everyone, we are going to look at some level 3 organic chemistry today. We are going to go through the NCA 2018 examination paper, uh, one question per video. Um, like always, um, subscribe if you haven't and smash the like button if you found this particular video helpful. So let's get into it. Um, question one, just always going to be the same type of question, which is going to be focusing on the drawing and naming. So always start with the longest carbon chain, one, two, three, four. Um, this is an acyl chloride. So straight away, this is going to be butan oil chloride. Um, and you don't need to say one butanol chloride because that's by default carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. So this is three chloro butanol chloride. Lots of chlorines, okay. Uh, next one, this is uh, again one, two, three, four, five carbons. Um, this is a ketone function group and you go from right to left to make the carbon the lowest number. So this is pen. 10 2 on okay now drawing drawing i feel it's a little bit easier work backwards hexan hexanel so that means hex one two three four five six carbons um al means it's an aldehyde that means on the first carbon you have a double bond o and the h four methyl so this is one one two three four on the fourth carbon there's a CH3 and just make sure every single carbon has four bonds okay now if you because um, like someone that I'm teaching right now this year in my level 2 or, or um, chemistry class um, he's really lacking the basics in um, organic like say if you don't know the function groups and you you're not going to do really well so go back to the basics I'm not going to spend too much time on naming here um, but if you do struggle in that component you just need to get to know the prefix the suffix the functional groups and that just takes some real learning organic is mostly about remembering things but um, to do to get really good results in organic is about getting um, applying what you memorized in questions that um, you never seen before. All right, so uh, next one, propane amide. So prop means three. Amide means it's a C-O-N. Nitrogen has three bonds. Carbons have four bonds. So you gotta make sure everything is happy. Okay, so those are the naming part. Let's move on to the next one. So this looks like a different uh, distinguishing test. So we have a, we have an aldehyde, we have an alcohol, and we have an acyl chloride. Okay. So develop a procedure to identify each of the three colorless liquid using the only following: water, tolerance reagent, and the certified dichromate. Okay. So they're limiting what you can use, and that makes this the next question. Um, just really quick, if you see acyl chloride or acid chloride. Um, that straight away allows you to distinguish it um, immediately because acyl chloride is the only organic molecule that you learn in year 13 that reacts with water straight away, which creates a HCl fume, and that um, is a really vigorous reaction. This is an aldehyde, aldehyde with Tolens reagent. You are going to see the silver mirror, and then the last but not least, but pentan one now you can confirm using the um, acidified partition of chromate because that's going to be oxidized into a pentan pentanoic acid okay so if we were going to break this down let's do it one at a time if we do the pentanel pentanel is so i'm just copying formula now if you now again if you're not sure like if you look at the CHO and the COH and then you may go, is that a typo? That's not a typo. Whenever you see the hydrogen written before the oxygen, that means it's an aldehyde group. That means you have a CHO. Okay, so that's not a typo. Um, it is deliberate to distinguish the aldehyde from the key, um, from the alcohol. Okay, so I'm just going to draw like this. Um, so if you react this with a Tolens reagent, and um, what you are going to get is that this particular part of the um, of the molecule will oxidize into the carboxylic acid 
Now, Tolan's reagent is a really, really weak oxidant. So the Tolan's reagent, just make a note to yourself, you, so this is a silver mirror test. This is a really weak oxidant. So what it means is that if you put the Tolan's reagent with say something like Penton, uh, so with Penton 1 ol it's not going to react because it's not strong enough to oxidize the alcohol into the carboxylic acid. It will only work with a really strong reductant such as an aldehyde. Okay, so this is you're going to see the carboxylic acid and you will see the observations that you will see is going to be the silver mirror. Okay, so the silver will be formed inside the test tube as a result of oxidation reaction. All right, now the type of reaction, this is oxidation and observation to the length. So why do you have a silver mirror? Because the Tolan's reagent contains Ag plus ions and then which will be oxidized into silver. Okay, next one, Penton, um, Penton 1 ol Penton 1 ol again, this is oxidation. Um, oxidation reaction for Penton 1 ol So let's just do everything. I'm just gonna cheat a little bit. I can't be bothered writing um, all of the CH2s. Okay, so this is Penton 1 ol So if you react with acidified potassium, um, dichromate oops like this um, let's get rid of this oops okay um, so this is going to be an oxidation reaction as well because the three car the four, the four carbons on the left hand side is not going to do anything you will oxidize this into a carboxylic acid as well okay now what you will see um, the potassium dichromate is orange and the observations that you will see it goes from orange to green okay so very important color change i'm just i'm uh, obviously i'm not explaining the full answers here but i'm just trying to show you the essential part okay um the next section is looking at pentanoyl chloride so this is again um i'm just abbreviating now what happens if you add water it's just a say, nucleophilic substitution i'm pretty sure as, as a year 13 if you just say substitution is enough because as for nca you don't need to do mechanisms so what's going to happen is that this cl is a really good leaving group so it really wants to leave and then it substitute the oh in so the hydrogen stays one of the hydrogen stays with the cl to form hcl as a, as a fume that you observe but then what really happens is that the um, the cl is substituted by an oh and you make hcl okay so this is a substitution reaction so the observations you're going to see white fumes being produced which is the HCl very very vigorous reaction okay so let's have a look at the answers and now um, so you can oops you can do this in doesn't matter what particular order so the first thing at water pentanol chloride vigorously steamy fumes as a substitution and then you make um, the carboxylic acid okay at Tolan's region one that will oxidize into the carboxylic acid and the other one will also oxidize to the carboxylic acid the color goes from orange to green okay so so this just comes down to just knowing these type of question um there's absolute no trick into these just learn roller memorize spend time memorize a flow chart and grind through questions like these all right next one okay so this is quite interesting i love questions like these gives a challenge so um unknown um x has the molecular c4h803 now it reacts with sodium carbonate solution to release carbon dioxide okay so what does that tell you that means it has to have a cooh when x is heated with um, acidified tracetamide dichromate the color goes from orange to green okay but the products doesn't react with benedict solution okay so that means doesn't react with benedict solution so this means is not an aldehyde not aldehyde so that means x so the product of this reaction is doesn't react with benedict solution that means you didn't make an aldehyde that means we 
didn't have primary alcohol. Okay, so it's all about using this clues to derive what you have. And you may go, why do I need to do this? Because first, you got three oxygens. It's, it's C4H, oops, um, you got C4H8O3. That's three oxygens. You got two oxygens in the COH because acid plus carbonate give you carbon dioxide gas. But there's another oxygen somewhere. So this is where the second bullet point comes in handy. All right. Now X undergoes the elimination reaction with conch H2SO4 to produce two organic compounds. So you have major minor products. Okay, so that's a lot of clues already. And let's figure this out. Okay, so based on the information above, draw the structural formula of unknown X. Justify it. Okay, so this is all about try and error. It's, it's, um, I haven't seen the answers at all, so I'm just going to show you how I tend to work this out. So we've got four carbons. Let's have a play. We know it has to have a COOH at the end. So that's this part is can't be changed. Okay, so that has to be in there. We don't have a primary alcohol. That means the other OH, because you have another oxygen, can't be here. Okay, because that doesn't satisfy the second bullet point. So the OH has to be either here or here. Okay, now let's let me explain why it can't be in this position. Because if this was in this position, if you look at X, look at the third bullet point, X undergoes elimination reaction with concentrated H2SO4, producing two organic products. What is H2? So if you, like, let me just quickly draw you, this is year 12. If you do conch H2SO4, what that does is that you remove the OH and you remove one of the hydrogens from the neighboring carbons as water molecules and then you like say this will be lost and you form a double bond or this will be lost and you form a double bond so major minor product means you have to be able to form double bonds on either side of the carbon now if i have the oh on this particular carbon can you see it is possible to remove a hydrogen of this carbon but it will be impossible to remove a hydrogen from this carbon because it doesn't have a hydrogen. So how can you double bond there? So that means this is wrong. So this is all comes down just to comes down to you know a bit of experience just to put all the clues together. And that's a part I love love about organic. I suppose that's why I kind of like uh, mathematics as well because it's problem solving. It is very very um, satisfying after you be able to solve it. So the OH has to be here. And let's see if we can put everything together and we can count C4, one, two, three, four, three O's, one, two, three, that's one H, three H, that's four, five, seven, eight, and that's eight H's. Okay, so this has to be the structural formula. Okay, so this must be the answer and explanation of any major minor product. So why is it, so we can say the first part, it react with sodium carbonate to form carb carbon dioxide gas. Um, so that means if I react this guy, which is the thing that we drew, if we react, so we're just going bullet point by bullet point. This is the first bullet point. If I react this with sodium carbonate, what's going to happen is that the I run out of space. I'm just going to down here. The rest of the molecule doesn't do anything, but then it goes to C O O N A. Okay, um, because what has happened, you will make water and you make C O 2, which is the carbon dioxide gas. Okay, but this particular formula is not really balanced because you have one NA on the right hand side, you have two NAs on the left hand side, you need to double this and you need to double this and then this reaction should be balanced okay so this is your first reaction this is an acid and base reaction giving off carbon dioxide um, now number two when x is heated the reaction goes from orange to green so if i look at the second bullet point what happens now 
is that if I um, use the same initial molecule, if I use the um, Benedict solution, uh, not Benedict solution, um, dichromate, Cr2O72 minus H plus, what's going to happen is that this OH will be, um, sorry, the H will be lost because it's an oxidate, uh, oxidation reaction. The other H will also be lost and then you form a ketone. Okay, so you don't change the other side of the reaction. This is a ketone. And ketones don't react with the Benedict solution because they can't be further oxidized. And number three, um, number three, I'm just going to do it here because I'm on space again. Um, let's, let's just try and fit it in here. It undergoes an elimination reaction. So if I start the initial, um, if I start with the initial molecule, so this OH has to go. So I have a choice. I can remove this H on the left hand side or the H on the right hand side. Now pore gets pore, so I'm going to do the major one first. So if I remove the OH and I move, remove this particular hydrogen, and this is the major product. And the minor product is going to be removing this hydrogen and double bond here, and you copy everything else exactly the same thing. Uh, that's the same as you see. Okay, so how do we explain the major minor product as year 12 stuff? Um, you just need to say the you know the OH has to be removed, and then you look at the neighboring carbons. Um, this is carbon number one, this is carbon number two, number three, number four. You can say that carbon number two has less hydrogen bonded to the carbon, therefore it's more likely for the carbon to lose another hydrogen. Therefore, this is a major product, okay, and vice versa, minor product. Okay, let's have a look at the answers. Okay, so as you can see, yay, didn't mark it up. Um, so this is a correct molecule. Um, it has to have a carboxylic acid group because it uh, uh, reacts, with, and then you make the CO and a salt. Um, must be a secondary alcohol because it can be oxidized, but doesn't. You know, it's just writing down the reasoning part. Um, and then elimination reaction, major minor products is removed from the carbon adjacent to CO, which is the least number of hydrogen atoms. Okay, so that's the top. There's nothing really new here. Okay, so I hope this particular video is helpful. Um, like always, um, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.